To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Sunday we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath. We celebrated the patriarchs. The first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ. We light it again as we remember our Savior, born a king in the line of King David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and we believe that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us, to rule the world wisely and to bless our nations. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. They told us how he would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace, and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and through him, his peace is found. Peace is like a, shine, a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophets said you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas time. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask this in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go into the altar of God. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, let us go before God, our Heavenly Father. 
and through an examination of our conscience, confess our sins, our faults, and our shortcomings, that we have not only offended God, but also our fellow neighbor. And now let us recite together the first form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned and thought, word and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O oh God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord who you seek. And the messenger of the desire, yes, he coming, says the Lord of Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, send your Son once again to judge the secrets of the human heart. May we, who in holy fear await his coming as judge, joyfully regard him as our Savior. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. Merciful Father, as we observe the passing of our brother Michael and our sister Florence Milinski into their eternal rest. We ask you for your grace and blessing. Accept them into your eternal kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children, gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled level to ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The rest of the responsorial psalm, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception, to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A man named John was sent by God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He knew not the light, but came to testify to the light. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love. Grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may willingly proclaim your holy gospel, through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Arturia and Trachonitis, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananus and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads will be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Words taken from the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle of our Advent wreath. It represented hope. Hope is defined as a desire with expectation of obtainment. I spoke last week of how there was such a deep longing and an expectation for a deliverer who was promised by God, who would be sent by him to redeem his chosen ones. This Savior, who's coming into the world, was spoken of by the prophets of God, from Isaiah to Micah from Joel to Malachi, and this Messiah would bring peace. Today, the second candle of our Advent wreath is lit. It represents peace. We read in the Old Testament of the struggle of the children of Israel from their enslavement in Egypt 
to their wandering in the wilderness for over 40 years, to the destruction of their temple in Jerusalem in 587 BC, and again being enslaved, there was still hope, a strong desire that God would hear their cries and fulfill his promise. And so after 4,000 years of longing, God heard their cries and he would answer their prayers. Out of the wilderness, there came a man named John who came with a message. It was a message of hope and one of peace. Just as the shofar or the ram's horn was sounded announcing the high Jewish religious celebrations, the voice of John the Baptist announced the coming of this deliv deliverer. It is interesting today that even today the shofar or ram's horn is blown and sounded on the two holiest days in Judaism, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, times that have been set aside for fasting, prayer, and repentance. John's call was like the sounding of the shofar, for John called upon those who heard his message that it would be a time of fasting, prayer, reflection, and most importantly, repentance. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. A voice of one crying out into the wilderness. You know, we are living at a time in our world, our nation, our communities, that needs to hear this message again and to take it to heart. There are many who see what is taking place in our world who believe that we are living in the end times. For example, in 2017, there were recorded over 72,000 overdose deaths attributed to opiates. In 2018, we are targeted to break this statistic. I was given a card this morning of a beautiful 26-year-old who was laid to rest by her parents. She was a victim of overdose. It attacks families. It attacks communities. It has attacked our nation and our world. In 2018, we are on target again to break this statistic. Another statistic. In just the first 43 days of 2018, there were 18 separate school shootings, averaging three a week. Amid all this, terrorism, violence, the rise of hate groups, the hypocrisy of so many in our government, and the list goes on and on. And in our world and in our country, things have not gotten much better. There are times when I personally think twice of turning on the news or reading a newspaper. If there was any time where we need to stop and listen to the one voice crying in the wilderness, it is now. 
John led a simple life. He didn't come with this message in a parade with balloons. God, out of his love for us, sent this one man with a simple message. Prepare the way of the Lord. It is a message that we who call upon God daily in our lives seek to prepare his way. But we must individually be on guard and not allow ourselves to be distracted by the influences, the evil influences of our world. This is the message that St. Paul spoke of in his letter to the Christians of Philippi. And he said, this is my prayer that your love may increase ever more and more in the knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you might be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and for the praise of God. My brothers and sisters, prepare the way of the Lord is today's message. It is a message that calls upon us to hearken to that voice that speaks to us this day in the very depths of our being. And how do we prepare the way of the Lord? I believe that in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, we have a formula to successfully prepare. Paul says, do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you might discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We prepare the way of the Lord, my brothers and sisters, when we learn the lessons of the gospel when we love more and hate less, when we learn not to judge others more harshly, harshly than we judge ourselves, when we learn to be more forgiving as Christ was on that cross and less critical and judgmental of others, when we learn to grow through our discernment of what truly is of value and to fill ourselves with right understanding, right speech, right actions, and right living unto the Lord as we reflect on his word. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, save my life. salvation may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven we ask this through jesus christ our lord amen pray my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by god our heavenly father Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope, joy, and peace you have given us. Implore you to accept this oblation which we now offer through Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept these gifts we offer to you in faith and trust. May this offering unite us with your Son's offering on the cross which brings to us eternal life we remember in prayer our sister florence and our brother michael mitlitsky we ask this through our lord jesus christ who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god forever and ever Sending on Jesus Christ to earth, 
You revealed your goodness and unending love, sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and the prophets. May we prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly. Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, live, suffered, and die for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
as often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, Florence and Michael Mietlitsky, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all your saints. Grant us peace 
in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it become our safeguard and healing remedy. My saving and master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, and may at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father and unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you. And may God's love be ever with you.
We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Trinity and grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning through Him, all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light, sh light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son, coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. church. I do bring to mind some of today's announcements. <clears throat> First of all, the Pothic or the Polish Christmas wafer is available in the vestibule of the church. Free will offering may be given to help defray the cost of the Apothic. I bring to mind also that the 2019 parish envelopes are in Please see Sue DeBrinzi for assistance. Today at 12 o'clock, we will be hosting, or the Ladies Adoration Society will be hosting, uh, our annual Christmas party to be held at the Magic Wings Butterfly Conservatory. I talked to Peg yesterday, and if there are those who still would like to attend, um, that you need to see Alice, because I don't see Peg this morning, um, uh, to be able to attend. And also um, associated with that, uh, a voluntary present exchange, and as noted in the bulletin, 
The gift should be no more than $10. Associated with the annual Christmas party, we have asked, and I have announced it in our bulletins, that this year we'd like to help the local veterans by collecting hats and gloves. There is a collection bin. I know that there has already been some monetary donations made, and all these items will be turned over on December 17th, a week from tomorrow. Also in association with our parish uh, activities, I want to thank Teresa for um, heading up this year's Adopt a Family. I know uh, in, in Don and Ellen Strosky's family, they are going through some difficult times, especially with Don's brother and his uh, sister-in-law. So we ask that you please remember them in prayer. But with that being said, I ask that you please consider contributing uh, to the two families, adopt the family. Teresa, I want to thank you in the way that you kind of presented it uh, to, to the parishioners. You did a heck of a lot better job than I did. And there is also a sign-up list um, that is found in the parish hall. Is that correct? I'll be downstairs with the list that has all the updated donations um, and items and And we also bring to mind that monetary donations may also be given. I know that there are some who have already given up monetary uh, contributions because we may not always be what we, what we should buy, like for clothes or toys, but a lot of times the money will help to be inclusive for many other things that could be used. Um, I bring to mind that pierogi are, are still on sale. Um, we've been doing pretty good this year. I know that there has been advertisement, and I know tomorrow I'm supposed to see Chris Collins for the downloading of our um, Holy Mass, and there will be a flyer that will be following up so that it, this news can be placed in the community. Also, there are a couple uh, calendars that are still left, um, and those are seven dollars a piece i'm trying to think oh i want to thank the choir and the ladies adoration society um, a funeral mass was held yesterday for the repose of the soul of eleanor ferrick and it was through the efforts of the choir as well as members of the ladies adoration that the family of eleanor ferrick was very much pleased and very much thankful are there any other announcements I failed to mention? Yes. I'd like to wish my mother a happy belated birthday. Her birthday was Friday. Yes. I'm, I thought it was better coming from you, Barbara, than from me. <laughs> and so, if we can, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. said are there any other announcements then let us remember yes please um, yesterday was the eighth year uh, since my mother Eleanor Sadowski passed away so I just wanted that to be known. your mom's name Eleanor Sadowski it was eight years yesterday please let us remember as we come before the altar of God to hear our prayers and, and our intentions are there any other intentions I have a dear friend of mine who's still going through a very difficult time with uh, addiction. 
and I ask that you remember this special individual in your prayers. And not only will we be playing, uh, praying for Florence and Michael Maitlitsky, but also for all our intentions. And I'd also like to offer prayers for Eliza, uh, the young lady, age 26, that was laid to rest by her parents. May God bless you, be with you, and watch over all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for our faithful departed, for which we pray this day, the eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in the love of Christ and of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.